Hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, pawn breaks, but preventing them. You know, usually we, we look at some pawn breaks, I, I've talked about that quite a bit, but uh, preventing pawn breaks, that's pretty tough. And we'll see if we can, um, if, if we can learn something from these, these games. It, what, what's kind of funny about them is the player who's, being, who's losing in these two games that I'm going to show are both really good prophylactic players, like preventative players. Question. It might be good to have maybe just a little definition of a pawn break. For oh, a, all right, for definitely. A newer Absolutely. Terminology. A pawn break is when you move a pawn to attack your opponent's pawn. That's all. So, like, if I play e4 and you play d5, you already made a pawn break on move one. Pawn break. And pawn breaks are important because, well, all pawn moves are pretty permanent. You know, you can't uh, take a pawn move back. But pawn breaks also imply that there could be a capture or trade of pawns. And so that's also doubly important. You can't take back captures either. So it's import very important to understand pawn breaks, and, and they're generally the plan in the middle games. Uh, generally a good plan is, is to find a good pawn break to play. So they're pretty important, and we'll look at some examples of one player restricting the opponent's pawn breaks. For example, in this game, it's uh, Salov against Karpov. And you would expect Karpov to be like restraining the opponent, but it's actually kind of the other way around. Uh, Salov wins a nice game here against Karpov. Let's see how he does it. Salov has white here against Karpov and goes for a Queen's Indian as Karpov has been known to play. Knight d2 there, not the most common move, and goes for c5. See Karpov's like, haha, you put your knight on d2, now I'm going to go for like a hedgehog sort of structure. All of these games are going to actually be in the hedgehog, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. I was talking about pawn breaks for a while. But, yeah, the hedgehog is this formation that Black's going to set up here. See? There we go. He did it. With his pawns there. There are a couple of important points to a hedgehog uh, pawn structure. One is that the c-pawn and d-pawn are traded. Right? The c-pawn and d-pawn are traded. This gives Black an advantage in the center. He's got more center pawns. Right? But White obviously has a lot more space. There's no doubt about that. White's got way more space in the center to compensate for it. And both sides have to consider their opponent's pawn breaks. Now maybe we have some people who are experienced in pawn breaks or in this pawn structure and they already know the two pawn breaks that Black would want to play here. Anybody want to tell me in the class? What do you guys think? What two pawn breaks does black generally want to play in the middle game? Not right now, you know, just the plan later. You know, what do you guys think? Anyone? D5? D5, definitely. If black can get in D5 without any positional ramifications or tactical ramifications, then usually black's going to be pretty happy about that. At least equalizing. What other uh, pawn break might you consider for black? Can you sit with the Yes. In the middle there, Arjun, is it? Yeah. Uh, yes. B5? B5, very good. Exactly. It seemed like you weren't too sure about that, but absolutely, B5. You know, if you can trade the B pawn for the C pawn, then we get better control of the center. So those are the two pawn breaks that Black generally is trying to execute in this structure. And White is typically trying to restrict those breaks, or maybe if they let them happen, there's some downside, you know, some other downside. Like, has to lose the bishop pair, you know, something random like that. Just depends on the position. But we'll see that Karpov never gets any pawn breaks going this game. Salov's just all over him. Uh, goes for rook e1. Queen c7. Already here plays a really good preventative move. Really good prophylactic move against one of Black's pawn breaks. Not that there's only one good move here, but I think his move is the most precise. You know, it's like the most perfect what was move. The last move. I'm sorry. Yeah. Queen c7. Okay. Yes. Queen a4 check. Queen a4 check. Great prophylactic move. Has a lot to do with pawn breaks. Just kidding. <laughs> Queen a4 check. I don't know. I mean, it looks okay. Knight d7. Knight bd7 probably. Just guessing. Doesn't seem like that's a tactical problem. It's good to look at checks, though. 
But it didn't have anything to do with what I said. Yes? We can move the plane to for A to make a check. Oh, are you kidding me? That's what he just said. <laughs> and then I laughed at him about it. <laughs> but yeah, the check is okay, but I'll block it. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with pawn breaks. You know, I don't know that I want my queen there. On the side of the board. That's where you guys like your queen? Yes? A4. Pawn to A4 instead of queen A4. A much more on point suggestion. Trying to cover B5, right? Yeah. It's... That is exactly what he did. Oh, he played pawn. Yeah, definitely. A4, a great move. Restricting the pawn break. Although it's a little bit deeper than you might think. Check out what happens next. After A4, he goes for... This is pretty common. Like, in the Hedgehog, Black will keep this knight here. Uh, he'll keep his intentions hidden. Usually, we're going to the square. Usually. But he played A4. So now we might get into B4. He played that A4, weakening B4. So Karpov just goes for old knight c6 this time. Pretty good play by Karpov there. He knows what he's doing, who would have thought. But now we'll see the true point of Salov's previous move. Anyone with a suggestion for white? Yes. To get the black horse on c6 and... Yeah, get that black horse. And then bishop will take back. And then what are you going to do? Then we can... That wasn't very well thought out. <laughs> the guy took it. He's obviously going to take back. Let's see. Trading's okay, but so what's the point, right? Come on, there's some high-rated players in this yeah, under 1400 yeah. class. What do you think? No. <laughs> Kofifi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Then the bishop will kill the pawn and then we can get his bishop. Okay, but he's not going to intentionally give up his bishop. This guy's a full world champion, you would not do that. Yeah, and anyways, you wouldn't like consider that during a game. You would just say, well, if he does that, uh, good for me, but let's think about real stuff now <laughs> for a moment. Taking the knight was correct. Oh, did you have a suggestion? Uh huh. I already said taking the knight was correct, so I hope that was it. Alright, tell me about it. So we move, uh, we move the, the, we move the knight from D2. Mm -hmm. All the way to, uh, to, um, what, F3, and that, wait, no, this was the three moves, actually. Actually, no, four. Okay. And then, well, and then from there, and then from there, we will, um. Trade the knights? I thought you were going to trade the knights and replace the knight. No, we can, uh, we can kill that knight, we can kill the That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. Uh, yeah, no, you could totally do that. That'd be all right. And, I don't know, what does that have to do with A4? Kill, oh, wait, something. Well, we, I was talking about how he, his true point of A4 was revealed. And then you're talking about knight over here, traded the knights. I mean, you could do that, but and he did trade these knights anyway. A5 is what he meant. A5. <laughs> Pawn break. Pawn break, yes. Pawn break. Why did he make this break? What do you think, Arjun? Because he wants to play B5, so try to. Who wants to play B5? Carbot. He wants to play B5. But so A5, doesn't that enable B5? Yeah. What? Then why would he do it? Right, so that, that was a reason you wouldn't do it. But you could say, well, I was calculating b5 for black, and it wasn't very good because of this variation. Yeah. Right? You, you get what I'm saying? Like, you know Karpov wants to play b5. You know it. <gasps> right? 
So let's say he does play b5. What would what's Salov's point? What's Valerie gonna do? Valerie Salov. You don't know? Anybody? What if black plays b5? I'll get these arrows going, they might help you out. There you go. <laughs> Love a good arrow. Oh, then. You know who really loves arrows? Oh, oh is he, you're both talking about the same thing, huh? This pawn break, right? C5? Yeah. C5. C5. I mean, if it's free, it's for me, right? Mm -hmm. What if I just take that pawn? What are you going to do? If black just takes your pawn that you made a pawn break with? Then we need some... You'd cry. Okay. Cry every time. There's no way you'd play C5 giving up the pawn, right? <gasps> free pawn. Learn about free pawn, you guys. I'm attacking that square twice with the bishop and pawn. Uh, well, Karpov's got notice. that square under control. Well, I didn't notice that bishop. If he does b5, c so takes b5. Uh, mm -hmm. If he takes back with the pawn, you can do a6, and then well, the pawn was worrying. Mm -hmm. If the bishop takes, you can do e5, bishop attacks the rook, and the pawn attacks the knight. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we're calculating. You guys learn about calculating over there? Yeah, that's all correct, mostly. <laughs> yes, if b5, which would be the move you'd want to play, that's what Karpov wanted to do, we were talking about it. Salov had that under control. He's going to take here. And as Christopher said, if you play a takes, well, I don't know if you'd push a6 right away, but you have a passed a pawn, a protected passed a pawn. You could even go with b4, knight b3. And that's, like he said, pretty bad for black. It's at least a problem. And bishop takes is even probably worse because of another pawn break. E5. As Christopher said, hits the guy and the other guy. Although you could try knight d5, but bishop takes and the e file is open. Yeah, that wouldn't really work. And if you assume you take back, I check it when you're queen. Check. Yeah, it's all forcing moves, right? See, this is why I didn't like your variation talking about knight f3 to d4. That's okay, but he's got forcing moves to play, right? You gotta look at forcing moves first. Like when this kid was talking about queen a4 check. I mean, that was a bad move. But you gotta look at your forcing moves How first. You said it was okay. Not yeah, it was being way. nice. It was bad. <laughs> Nobody would play that. It doesn't lose, but... You know, it doesn't even make any sense, hardly. All right, so A5. Now, we learned about B5, right? Uh-huh. So, Karpov didn't want to do that. So, what did he do? I mean, he could take the pawn. That would already stop Black's pawn break if he plays B takes A. Five. Yeah, so Salov would already consider that a success. And he'd still have a move like knight b3 coming up. So it wouldn't be so bad. He just goes for, I think, not a great move. He could keep the tension, which is what he does. Develop your bishop. Bishop e7. But still, Salov is happy to just take on b6 and trade the a pawn for the b pawn. White would love to do that. Then how is black going to play b5 with no b pawn? Not likely. Right, so he, well anyways, he plays rook b8. Like I said, bishop e7 is probably the best move. Because after takes, he doesn't even play rook takes. He goes for queen takes. I think he got a little shy about rook takes because of c5, pawn break. I, I don't know for sure, actually. But this does look a little scary, you know? Just getting some initiative. Because you got e5, knight d6 check coming up. There's some tension here. I don't know how that's going to work out, though. I still could have potentially done this. Either way, he's in trouble, though. He played queen takes. Which uh, isn't worse, really, I don't think. This was a nice move. Not the only move, but a really nice move here by Salov. Rover. <laughs> Classic rover. Rook up and over, but this time to the queen side. Usually you're going for a king side attack. 
when you're lifting your rook up. But Salov's attacking on the queen side with his rook. And why not? We're going to get at that a6 pawn. Get total control of the queen side. And, well, Karpov will have nothing to do. And he'll just be strategically lost. And that is what ends up happening. There. Pokes the queen. Backs it up. Double it up, threatening the pawn. And he's defending it. But after b4, the position looks really nice for white. Karpov's not going to be getting in d5 or a5 anytime soon. Even f5 looks pretty risky for the king. So it's a terrible position. He's got a lot less space and no pawn breaks. And even an isolated pawn to boot. Queen on a7 looks terrible. So it goes to back to b6. Queen a4, finally, right? Am I right, Arjun? <laughs> it is a pretty good move here to triple up on the a pawn. Isolated a pawn. Gets developed. And here comes bishop b2. So finally they got all their pieces out. It took them a while. They were doing all sorts of positional stuff. It's like, come on, just get developed already. But he attacks the g pawn. And uh, here Karpov, he's in a tough spot. As you might find out if you try to defend your g-pawn. Who's got a suggestion? F6. F6. Well, that's obviously terrible already. I mean, it never play F6, right? We all know that. But yeah, your white squares would be doing pretty badly if you have to play F6 there. That would be definitely an anti-positional move. No doubt about it. Arjun? What happens if you cat if you... Castle well, then you're like my favorite hotel, giving away a free night. <laughs> oh, yeah. The knight's hanging. It looks like you might be able to trap the queen, but your bishop on e7 would also be hanging if you castle. So, yes. Um, we can move the bishop to g. You mean f? 7. What? Oh, that's what white's trying to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the white. I know. But I'm saying, what should black do to stop that? What should black do to stop bishop g7? Yes? And bishop f6. That's what he did. Wrong. That, that would be the best move if it didn't lose tactically. But nobody suggested the move that you don't want to play. Well, I mean, just go back. Bishop okay. f8. I was thinking e5. Rook g8. Like, rook e5. Yeah, rook, oh, well, rook g8 yeah. would be best. Rook G8, then you can't castle. So, it, I mean, maybe it's best, but it's still bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything gives something up. There's no way to just defend G7. That's what Cranbeck did against the Rohan. Oh, yeah, that's good. Rook G8. That's possibly true. They played like a billion times, so I don't know what game you're talking about. It's but yeah, E5 would be, the, would be the move to give away the least, I think. But it's still bad. Karpov didn't want to do that. Then he'll never... Um, Never pawn break in this lifetime. I mean, how are you ever playing d5? Yeah. And then knight can come in here as well. Really nice. Total domination here. This is lost strategically. Karpov would never go for this. Domination. Yeah, he would never go for that. So he played bishop f6, but it loses tactically. Let's see who's got their tactics hat on. Anyone? Uh, bishop takes f6. Yeah, bishop takes bishop. Uh, takes, wait, no, uh, bishop takes bishop. Oh, takes. Then g takes bishop. Yeah, g, ta g takes bishop, then... Where's the tactical win? I mean, you ruined the structure, I guess, but... Mm. You didn't really win tactically, right? Tactically. Yeah, he, he won, and then the game was, like, over soon. Uh, he didn't just grind it out. Uh, I guess bishop takes bishop, then c5. Who's playing? Who's turn is it? I don't know, white. <laughs> white turn? Yeah, white to play. Oh, if it was black's turn, wouldn't he play bishop takes b2 fork in the guys? So it's got to be white to play. Oh, don't even tell me a move for black. It's white's turn. I know. Okay, all right. Because <laughs> last time you told me, anyways. Well, what do you think? Queen to D1. <laughs> That's not illegal. 
B3? No. D1? Yeah, he said D1. Oh, I thought it was B1. If you play Queen D1, D1 then, what is the then threat? Then takes B2. Then, yeah, then you're I said you win tactically. Queen D1 yeah, is moves, not a threatening move, no, right? Moves. You're going to have to look for a move that's under one of these three categories. Checks. Captures. Threats. If you're not playing one of those forcing moves, those are three kinds of forcing moves you got. Checks, captures, and threats. You're not going to win tactically. Right, that, that's how you win with a tactic, is with a check, capture, or threat. Possibly C5? C5. See, that's a threat, right? You see what I'm saying over here? Mm -hmm. Threatening the queen. Nice pawn break. Any uh, variation to back that up, or um, just hope it works? C5. Um, I'm trying to think either... Pawn takes, then knight takes. The knight takes the next pin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, D takes C5. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, E5, I think. Interesting. It only have one. Now it only has one uh, defender. Yeah. So back to E7. Okay. And uh, let's. Kind of not You're on the right track, though. You have to use one of my favorite calculating techniques. I do this all the time. Switching that move order. Okay. Um, so. So C, I... No, no, no. Come on. Switch the move order. E5. Oh, oh, E5. E5. See, if you play E5 first, I'm less inclined to play Bishop E7 here. Like I did it in your variation. Because then my G7 pawn will be hanging. After I play, after white plays e takes d6, black's g7 pawn's hanging, and the bishop's hanging. And if you take back c5's a fork, although that's kind of complicated because there's a pin going on, but that actually might work out for white. But anyways, uh, e5 first. Yeah, You're I absolutely forgot, right. I forgot that the knight was pinned by the queen, so I thought that. The that's the classic queen. point. Yeah. That's the classic point. Yes. Well, it seems like you did know that when you wanted to play e5, though. Then you realized it was pinned. Oh, uh, yeah. But you didn't realize it on C5 it was pinned. Got it. Yeah, I gotta learn about pins. <laughs> E5 first. This is a really nice one. And then C5. Pawn break after pawn break. Really nice. That's how you get it done. The guy's in obviously huge trouble now. He can't play DC. And, um... He just backs it up, because his queen was hanging. <laughs> Takes it, because the bishop was hanging. Takes that. And then? Um, C5. C6. C5. C5. It's already under C5. That's what he meant. Come on. <laughs> he did the best he could. Fork down. Now, this is tricky, but it does end up winning. Let's see if we can beat Karpov. Let's, um... Green is in trouble now. Yes! Take it, right? Oh. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. Uh, B5? Oh yeah, B5. No, 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 no. Just move my queen to defend the rook. I guess D7, I don't know. Still looks pretty bad. But equal material there. No. You could win material. Oh, knight, knight C4. Wait, no, no. Oh, yeah, Knight C4. What? Dang. Pretty good. Got you guys. Knight C4. Get wrecked. Really good tactic there. The knight's pinned, and the queen, it would be a deflection from the rook. Can you do the training? Knight c4. I could. I could. Anyways, uh, goes for knight c4. Great move. Rook back to b8. Now he is threatening to try to take the queen, or take the knight with the queen, rather. Wait, who's turn? White. Yeah. Yes. Can move the knight, which is on C4, to um, um, 
where a pawn, where the black pawn is three five. That's true. Because that's true. E five. Yeah. Like the queen could get it, or the king, or anything could get it. That's true. Well, you can win more than a pawn. You can win more than a pawn here. Ninety-five. Yeah, I'm guessing. Well, what what if it is? You know, I, I could just say yes or no. You'd believe me. Mm. <laughs> you know. I have intuition. That's why. But well, why don't you calculate it? What would Black do? Okay, ninety-five. I guess queen d6. Or why don't you? Or queen. Or queen c7. Sure. So how are you beating those moves? Um, yeah, yeah, five. No. Yeah, yeah, doesn't work. Ninety-five doesn't. Doesn't like it. He doesn't stand by his move. Um, if ninety-five, the queen moves. I guess knight. Oh. The last move was rook b8, by the way. <laughs> yes. I'm thinking queen to a7. Threatening what? Yeah. So, castle? Yeah. Probably at castle, right? Mm -hmm. And then how are you beating that? Then rook a6. Queen c4. Trade knights. You guys could never beat Karpov, no matter how winning you were. Wait. But that is a pretty interesting variation, I guess, right here. I never looked at this. Because, you know, the knight is hanging here, like I was saying. So it's just going to be a knight trade. And Karpov would love that. Oh, it's still bad position, actually, because he's got a past beat on for nothing. But, um... Yeah, but it's a trade of horse. It's a horse trade. Horse for horse. <laughs> so it's like, come on. He can win horse for nothing. You know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Christopher's right. And everybody who said so after is yeah. just as right. Hey, you can just take it. You know? And if Rook takes him, yeah. If Rook takes what? Arjun and only yeah, him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Arjun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he has a back rank issue, right? Oh. You get what I'm getting at here? Mm -hmm. Even if you take with the queen, I'll trade queens first, then get on your back rank. I'm gonna shoot. And either way, you're definitely winning a rook and probably even some mating ideas if he doesn't trade queens. So you just have to take the knight, that's all. Oh. Now you are pinned a little. Oh. No, no, just to the pawn. You could even. You just sort of uh, have to have some fancy footwork to get coordinated here, but he even just takes the the five e pawn or whatever, and then a uh, queen d three. Yes. So he gets everybody coordinated, and yes. Karpov has to resign. So Karpov resigns, and White wins. Great game by Salov. He first restricted those pawn breaks. He even took the initiative there with a4, a5. That's the way that he stopped Karpov's pawn break. By going on the attack on the queen side there. Stopping him from playing b5. Oh, wait an hour. Did you have a question or a comment? Um, Great game? Had You're correct. I had to kill the king. <laughs> well, this game's over because the guy's yeah. up a knight, and so Black just resigned. Okay. Black says we're done here. Yeah, it's checkmate. There's no way. Have you ever heard of it? Alright, let's just go on to the next game. This game's over. I don't understand. You don't understand what? That he resigned because he's a down a knight? That's something to resign about. Like, is it a checkmate or what? No, he resigned means he gave up. He just gave up. That was the problem. What's going on here? Alright, there we go. Back to reality. So... We've got another game by a great restrictive player known for his defensive prowess, Petrosian. Everybody knows about Tigran V. Petrosian, yeah. former <laughs> world champion, RIP. 
And there's also other grandmasters named Tigran Petrosian, but they aren't world champion. Anyways, Petrosian loses with Black here. I was talking them all up, but he lost. Against uh, Romanition. He was pretty good. Not as good as uh, old Tigran, but still pretty good, you know? So it's sort of like a Queen's Indian, right? But Romanition didn't play d4. So he's, it's, he's keeping it like an English territory. And that extra tempo is giving him the option to play e4, actually. Which he takes. Bishop b7, bishop d3. Sort of a weird opening, but it, it gets back to a normal structure, what we all know and love. This looks like the Spanish. Yeah, it looks just like it. JK. <laughs> Got him. That's what happens when the bishop's on C2. That's true, but it usually goes around like this. Doop do doop do do, right? Yeah, there's no like that. And anyways, this looks more like oh I uh, uh, spoiled it there, but he plays knight c6. But it looks more like a hedgehog, right? Remember about we were talking about the hedgehog? Yeah. Just for a minute. But yeah, that's the deal. He's playing it like a hedgehog. Plays knight c6 just like Karpov did. I didn't think that was actually best, but hey, what do I know? He's Yeah. So he probably never has played a bad move. Wait. <laughs> so he finally gets like that hedgehog formation, right? With the six, the sixth rank, all those pawns there on the sixth rank, covering the fifth rank. And again, it's important that we got these pawns traded. The C pawn and D pawn. You know, otherwise this would be bad for Black. But Black's got an extra center pawn, and that's good. And he's still got those same pawn breaks to go for. And we gotta stop him. Eight yes. Moves. Three move checkmate. Three move checkmate? Oh my so, goodness. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, whatever you're talking about, Black's not just gonna let you do it, right? Black will stop you from doing anything that you wanna do. He's not just gonna let you, like, go around and, like, take your stuff or whatever. You know, like, I'll just move my queen here and move my knight here and mate, right? Is that what you're thinking about? I think I found it, right? You were trying to do this, weren't you? Admit it. So what do you mean it would be bad for Black? Yes, you're saying to play knight c6? No, you're oh. saying yeah, without the pawn. Oh well, he has less space. Okay. What are you doing? Yeah, it's not good to have a lot less space. That's the bad part about this opening and the structure for Black. It's got a lot less space, but it's good to have an extra center pawn. He's got an e-pawn and a d-pawn. White only has an e-pawn. Because so they saying, traded c-pawn for d-pawn. Oh, so you're just saying because since they have less space, that's not good, but they have that extra center pawn, so that makes up for that? Yeah, oh, okay. exactly, exactly. Okay. Definitely. And that's, a main, that's the main point of playing the hedgehog, really. And hopefully, Black's hoping he's going to get in his pawn breaks and then equalize space and end up better because of that. You know, it, it's a tough opening and structure to like have to uh, have a, a middle game or late middle game end game that turns out to be pretty equal because of uh, the fact that it's so double edged. You know, usually either black will come over the top and get his pawn break and be better or white will stop black and be better. It's very hard to just have it so it's purely equal, although not impossible, of course. But anyways, uh... Yeah, that's, that's the main point of the hedgehog, really, is that you have that extra center pawn. So you've got to play C takes D. Otherwise, it's not a hedgehog. If you have a similar structure, but there's you have a pawn on C, C7 and they have a pawn on D3 or whatever, that's, don't think that that's a hedgehog. It's not. You're just worse. you got less space. All of the knights hanging in <laughs> that fantasy position, but you get what I mean. Anyways, uh, let's continue through this one, though. What happened here? Bishop... Uh, yeah, he, let's continue here. King h1, right? Queen c7. And now Romanishan actually makes kind of a mistake. He plays the point of his last move, King h1, was f4. Why is that move so bad? What's wrong with it? What should black do to punish it? D5? <laughs> How can you not you give half-hearted suggestions? Do you believe in it or 
I want to see the leg though. <laughs> well, you can calculate for a little bit. You can think about it for 30 seconds then if you have no idea. Maybe you'll get some idea. Did you have a suggestion or were you just saying something to make fun of the kid who was wrong? Probably the second one. Alright. Well, um, what do you what do you think? What do you well, think we'll actually do? I was just thinking it'd be nice if you could get a knight on e3. So you're asking how I could be punished. Yeah. But uh, so, what's your plan to do that? Knight g4. I think I could take on c6 and win. Well, it was a tricky move, but I think if knight g4, I'll play knight takes c6 intermezzo. I don't want to take the knight and then take this knight. Wouldn't do that. I would take that knight. Then this knight's hanging. But tricky idea. Made a threat and everything. It's the type of move I would definitely look at. You'd be a fool not to look at that move. You'd also be a fool not to refute it, though. <laughs> I gotta refute that. Anyone? Anybody with an idea for black? Well, you could also... Knight takes d4, and then you have... Um, After queen takes d4? Two attacks. Oh. On e4? Because I'm trying to three times. Oh, yeah, that one works, right? I'm all over that e-pawn. <laughs> you guys are as bad as Petrosian. Petrosian mm -hmm. played the wrong move, too. Petrosian's a world champion. <laughs> well, I don't think he was during this game. Actually, I can look up in my notes here. 75? He was not. Definitely not. He was. No, he was Karpov in 75. Owned. <laughs> well, Knowledge he, of. He, did end up being world he was before that, was. actually, yes. So yes. Karpov beat him? Karpov beat uh, Korchnoi and then should have played Fisher, but that never happened. So that's how Karpov was world champion. Fisher beat Spassky. Spassky might have beat Petrosian. So that's how you get from those, you know, that era. So nobody knows, huh? Nobody. Well, let's take a look. I'll just show you. It is the under 1400 class after all. So Petrosian got it wrong. The under 1400, which is everybody in here, uh, <laughs> got him. Uh, we shouldn't necessarily get it right all the time. But all he has to do is play with B5. B5 is the way to go. Now you can take the knight first or play B5 first, then after takes, take the knight. But either way, it's about that B5. Learn about pins, remember? We already talked about learning about pins today. You can't take b5 twice because your bishop would be hanging. True. You see what I mean over there, back there? Yeah. If white takes on the b5 pawn two times, you know, with the pawn and then after pawn takes with the knight, the bishop's hanging. It's a pin. That's the problem with the bishop on c2 in this pawn structure. It could be loose, because usually there's a rook or queen on the c-file for black in a hedgehog. It happens all the time. Black's got a half-open c-file. They're going to put their rooks or queens on it if they know what they're doing. And so the bishop on c2 is a little loose there. And he could have taken advantage of this by playing that pawn break. And that's great for black. That's exactly what black wanted. But both sides didn't quite understand that. They both made a misunderstanding. And he played rook a d8. Bad move. Not great. They might say, well, what should Romanishin have done to stop the guy from playing b5, right? Well, you can start off by taking the knight. He'll take back, and then you can control b5 in many different ways. a4, like we looked at last time. Queen e2. Also possible. He's even not threatening to play b5, actually, because the queen is still on d1. 
So it's defending c2. And so the c2 bishop's not loose like it was in the other variation. We all understand what I'm talking about there? Yep. All right. So that's, I mean, you could do anything to prevent b5, really. But I think knight takes knight's the, the start. Generally, white doesn't want to trade material in this opening, right? He's got more space. But you definitely don't want to let him play b5, so you got to do what you got to do. Rook a, d8. So not exactly perfect play in the early middle game here. But it gets pretty good. Queen b8. Rook lift. Now, Petrosian plays a move. It's not a great move. And it looks pretty bad, too. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works. It looks bad, and it is bad. But uh, I would say it's somewhat typical of the structure. You might see a lot of people playing with the move g6 in a hedgehog to try to play e5. They want to play e5 here. But they don't want to let you go there. See what I mean? They don't want to let knife f5. Tell me we know about knife f5, right? You don't want to let knife f5 happen. Yeah, so uh, a lot of times people play g6. Now, obviously, there's a lot of downsides to this move. It weakens the king. It weakens the dark squares around, uh, around the king. And this is especially bad when the bishop's on b2, you know, as opposed to, like, e3, which sometimes you'll see... In a hedgehog, Marazzi bind hedgehog, the bishop would be on e3. And then it's a little safer. But with the bishop on b2, that's asking for trouble, you know? That's asking for trouble. So it wasn't exactly the best move, but he's already kind of in a tough position, actually. So we know what uh, Petrosian's about. He's trying to play that e5 and get some counterplay. You know, like, imagine it's Black's turn and he plays e5, right? I guess you could take, which Petrosian doesn't seem to be too afraid of. You could also back it up. I mean, if you back it up, I guess I'd take here, so I could play my knight into e5. If I get to trade, if black gets to trade e-pawn for f-pawn, I'll put my knight on e5. Really good knight. Really good knight there. You guys follow me? So, it's totally possible, you know, I was thinking at least, that this is what was running through Petrosian's mind at the time. And Romanishan plays a double x clam here. Great move by Romanishan. Really brilliant play. More than making up for his minor flub regarding the b5 pawn break. Yes? Just have a little question. Okay. Who is that? <laughs> I don't know. I never met that guy. <laughs> I think that's great. All right, come on, I need some chess answers. White to play is start throwing down some double X clams. You guys know about double X clams? No. What do you think, Arjun? I'm, oh, look at H3. I wouldn't really call it a double X clam. <laughs> that move might be a single on a good day. You know, come on. What's the threat? Rick Jenks, H7. <laughs> Well, you can keep building, but I wouldn't give a building move double X clam generally. You know, you could try to keep building, like Bob. Now, now you're going for double X clam, right? Now you're going for double X clam. But remember how we were talking about like how he wants to play old E5, yeah, just to play E takes F to play knight E5. If you play F5 first, you just give away E5 without me even working for it. Knight takes c6 then. That's pretty interesting. Knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, f5, e takes f5. And if you take back, your rook is hanging to my bishop on c6. Yeah. Just thinking about it here, I didn't look at that idea. His move was just so double x clam, I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know? But he's actually trying to stop Petrosian from making pawn breaks, either e5 or d5. And he also takes the initiative to do so, much like Salov in the previous game. Knight d5. Just hang your knight, come on. Just hang your knight. Great move. I mean, it's a peace sacrifice. 
There's no doubt about it. And black doesn't really have a choice because you don't want to let me play knight takes bishop on e7 check. If you let white do that, your dark squares will be irreparably weak. No doubt about it. So you're going to have to take the knight, free knight. Takes back. Takes this. And queen takes. And then Petrosian touched his knight and resigned. Not JK. <laughs> that would be like something in a chess camp, though. Mm -hmm. See, touch. Ah! Oh, you know? <laughs> like, come on. I did see that in the Blitz, too. Uh -huh. The guy's knight was pinned to the queen. And he picked up his knight, tried to play like 95. He's like, ah! That's not good. But he had to move his knight. A tragic story. It didn't happen to Petrosian this time, though. But, uh, so what's the deal? The guy gave up a, an entire knight. He got one pawn for it. Just for this menacing looking battery. All right, that's it. But you'll see that Petrosian's got like nothing going on now in the center. He's totally shut out of the center. He obviously can't break with d5 anymore. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't even have an e pawn to break with e5. Still get b5 going, but white will just hold on and be really solid in the center. Let you take and take back. And he can attack on the king side as is being announced in the audience. <laughs> yeah, g4, g5. He's got another pawn break with f5 coming up, right? So he's got a ton of compensation for the piece. More than enough. Even computer says knight d5 is best. Peters really understand that positional compensation. Welcome to the future. So, goes for uh, this one, and you love G4, but I mean I understand it. Romanish is just more careful than you. You know, these guys got the bishop here, and <laughs> that would be a little bit risky. You know, if if this ever gets sacrificed upon. But, well, anyways, he just goes for f5. He's ready to play f5. Just break with f5. What's the problem? You know, not a big threat or anything. Bishop d8. This looks like classic Petrosian here. Queen goes over to h4. This is, this is the most classic Petrosian move you'll ever see. If you didn't know this was a Petrosian game, now you know. Or e5. Petrosian loved to just put his rook where the guy can take it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, he'd always sack the exchange by just putting his rook there. You could take it with a piece, like a, a bishop or a knight. That's how he's doing And this actually is the only move. Because your knight is attacked and you don't want to move it. After FG, you'll be regretting that decision. So he has to play here. But he was, like, banking on this for a long time. He loves to play rook e5. Yeah, anything to sack the... Sack the exchange passively. But yeah, he wants to control the dark squares. He wants to make sure that he doesn't lose on the dark squares to mate. You know, that's all. And he's already up a piece, so giving up the exchange, he'll still have two pieces for a rook. Queen goes in. Obviously, don't take that. Come on. Oh, well, you could, actually, I guess. But now he actually uh, blunders it and is, is losing. He only has one good defensive move to not be lost for black. White's last move was queen h6, just for you at home taking notes. Although if you're at home, you could just rewind. But um, white's last move was queen h6. How is black supposed to defend this dreadful looking position? Looks pretty dreadful to me. Full of dread. What do you think? King h8, rook g8. What? Good idea there. King h8. Rook to try rook g8. What? So king h8, I'll probably play what move? I think it's pretty clear. I was thinking fg. Oh yeah, fg. Why not queen takes f8? Oh yeah, queen f8 is pretty winning, right? Because he disconnected the back rank there. Good call. Yeah, he's right. If king h8, you immediately hang your rook on f8. Forgot about Dre. Okay, you see that uh, the queen and bishop on the queen on the b file there. 
Not doing great for the defense, right? This is another consequence of White's sacrifice, knight d5. Shutting out the queen side, because he's got so much space now. That's the advantage of having all the space. It's difficult for your opponent to get over to one side of the board. It's much easier for you. Look at those two bishops. Look at, look at all four bishops. You can tell who has more space. Those bishops are amazing because of his space advantage. Nothing? Nobody's got a defense at all? I, this one, I didn't think this one was too hard. Knight g4. Kick the queen away. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. That's all. Just kick the queen away. Knight g4. The queen's got several moves. Queen f4, queen h3, queen d2. They're all fine. But you got to get that queen out of your face. The problem is the best thing that black can do after any of those moves is just retreat back to f6 with the knight. And it's possible that Petrosian thought he could even play for a win here. He is up a piece after all. Piece up. So he goes for queen c7. I did a little bit of this analysis. I thought queen h3, I don't know if it's the best one. Double it up probably. Well, maybe he could have been afraid of this too. It's pretty scary. He's got a ton of compensation for a piece. You know, just amazing position for white. But still unclear, you know, still unclear. Still could have played it. He can't really play after queen c7. Only one winning move, but it's strong enough. Any ideas for white? To keep that attack going? Forcing move, too. Gotta make a forcing move. That's pretty forcing. And then? Uh, I guess F takes. Alright. Um, Bishop takes E5. Take back. Exactly. I actually didn't like that. <laughs> Never take the exchange, he says. Alright, yeah, you could do that, you know. Wouldn't be totally winning. Still two pieces for a rook and... Well, he's, I mean, White's got some pretty good pawn situation there. I will admit. No touch. <laughs> Anyone? Any other suggestion? FG is definitely a reasonable suggestion. Yeah, I liked that. Also, what about G4 and then G5? Or is that Stealing G4? Arjun's Thunder here. Oh, sorry. G4 wouldn't be too smart considering the best move for Black last move was Knight G4. When you play g4, I'll still do that. Uh, Just yeah. also give me that pawn. Yeah, okay. What about f3 g6? g6? That's what he, that's somebody already oh, said. Somebody FG. said somebody. Yeah, fg, fg. Yeah. Rook h3 building. I like it. Yeah, you get rook first and then the. Rook h3, then g4 coming up, huh? Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting stuff. It's scary with that bishop on the though. Yeah. That's true, that's what I mentioned earlier to Arjun. Mm -hmm. So he made a, pr this is like combining your ideas, he made a preparatory move to make FG even stronger. Rook G3? Rook G3. Arjun's coming up with the tough moves today, did you notice that? Rook G3. Now if he takes on, G3, on G6, you take back on G6, sack the bishop, you follow me? Takes back again. I don't care which way you take with the pawns. And then rook takes check. Mate. Not quite, but <laughs> it's pretty much busto at that point. Mm -hmm. Minimum going to lose your queen. And uh, also maybe even queen takes g6 was stronger than rook takes g6. But rook takes g6 minimum wins the queen. So you don't need to calculate too much more than that. Rook g3 is an incredibly strong move. Definitely something Petrosian could have underestimated or even not cared about too much. Probably looking at moves like you guys suggested, FG and Rook H3, maybe G4, that kind of stuff. But Rook G3, really strong move. The strongest one. Goes for this. And then uh, he snaps this off before taking on G6. D6 also was a good move, but it, not necessary. And then here it comes anyway. Oh, 
Trevor's just pretty tricky though, right? It's not going down without a fight. There's only one winning move even here, actually. And if you've learned about pins, you'll definitely get this one right. That's like a theme for this. For this uh, un unintentional theme. A motif. Pin time. Bishop to um, H5. Dang, you did learn about pins. Just like I taught him. <laughs> Just like a very good move. Just winning the knight, that's all. Pinning it so your queen's not hanging. Like after h3, for example, your queen was hanging. But bishop h5, pinning the knight and winning it. Attacks the queen. Just moves it. You can move it, it's true. This one. Yeah, this is actually a pretty cool end. It's still pretty sharp here, but... Yeah, d7, that's good enough. Bishop b7. Final move of the game here. Make him resign. Queen takes f4. Resigns. Yeah. Sacrificing the queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Pinning it and winning it. Even if you try to block with this, then I'll make this queen. You know, you can't. your bishop can't do all that stuff. It's just a bishop, after all. And, uh, yeah, you're going to be down, like, the exchange and two pawns. And the pawns are, like, on d7. <laughs> so that's a pretty good pawn. So that's why black Petrosian resigned with black here after queen takes off four. He's just going to be down too much material. And a great attack by Romanitian. Really good sacrifice with knight d5. Stops Petrosian from doing anything in the center. And was in total control of the game for the rest of the way. And that's what happens if your opponent doesn't have a viable pawn break. You're just attacking the entire time. Whether it's on the queen side like we saw for Salov. Or the king side here for Romanitian. They beat two really good prophylactic players. I mean, if you think about defensive players who prevent their opponent from attacking Petrosian and Karpov are the top of the list, you know, pretty much. Uh, but they got a taste of their own medicine here. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're watching at home, be sure to like and subscribe to the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta's YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye.